90.3 WHPC now presents Law You Should Know. The law affects every aspect of our lives, our home, our jobs, and our recreational activities. Now, learn about the law and how to protect yourself against the loss of your liberty or property and learn how to stand up for your rights and seek compensation when you have been wronged. Your host for Law You Should Know is attorney Kenneth J. Landau, a past dean of the NASA Academy of Law and frequently lectures to lawyers on ethics and avoiding problems with clients and to the public on how to choose and use lawyers. This is Law You Should Know on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Hi, this is Ken Landau on Law You Should Know, and I'd like to welcome you to a continuing conversation with Susan Zimmerman. She's a chartered financial consultant and a licensed marriage and family therapist, and we'll be discussing how you can minimize conflict over an estate in another program available as a podcast at nccradio.org. Susan told us about how to avoid problems with your estate and have conversations about it and what different options may be and get information from family members to try to prevent conflicts. But now we're going to talk about where someone has passed on and how to minimize conflict over an estate. And Susan, as a financial planner and a licensed marriage and family therapist, is it more common than not, there is conflict over an estate, you know, how the provisions of a will? Well, unfortunately, yes, there can be all kinds of different, sometimes it's minor grievances, a, a sense of something being unfair, not in a gigantic way, but there are other times when, especially if there's a business or a sometimes farm families leave the farm, which is a business, to maybe one or two of their many children. And so it's it's quite uneven in that regard. And so anytime things are very, very lopsided, that's when there can be some, some hard feelings, difficult feelings. What is the first thing uh, when someone learns that the provisions of a will and perhaps they're not so happy about them. What is the first thing that you recommend as a financial consultant and a licensed marriage and family therapist? Yes, Ken, that's a great question. And of course, what what we advocate, we talked about before, is it's best to have these kinds of questions discussed openly before you've had an estate a certain way and then shocked your heirs. But in the absence of that, one of the things that I remind people about is sometimes it's a situation that you need to think of as a circumstance that is is an expectation that's causing you to suffer. One of the professors at a class I attended uh, all about forgiveness gave this definition of forgiveness, that forgiveness is releasing an expectation that's causing you to suffer. And you may realize that without having even thought about it before, you did have an expectation of, say, an equal division of your parents' estate. And if you found out that it was quite unequal, then that would be a cause of some suffering. And unless you've decided that you're going to take legal action, and and usually that's a very that's considered an unappealing thing, unless there's a dire need or a, there was some kind of illegal activity that caused this uneven distribution, it it can be really liberating to realize that you are suffering because you're ruminating about the expectation and the lack of fairness that exists with that. Does that make sense? Is it important to vent that your feelings about the lack of fairness? You know, and if so who should you vent them to? What I call the venting rule is to vent to someone who doesn't have a vested interest in it. So if you have a close friend who is, you know, not going to feel offended or like wanting to defend, because certainly if the person who got what you can consider an unfair higher degree from an inheritance, that's not the person to vent to. A close friend, it can be a therapist for sure. And usually therapists have therapeutic, 
you know, consoling they can do to help you reach a point where you gain acceptance of an unfair situation. And by the way, forgiveness, even if you like that definition, releasing an expectation that's causing you to suffer, forgiveness can be of a situation. It doesn't have to be of people, but sometimes we have to forgive the people that establish an an estate distribution in a way that you feel is very unfair, but th- most parents aren't trying to be unfair. They're, they have their version of how they define fairness and equity. Or and they have their perceptions, which may be wrong or may, right. Be, right. may not be correct. Yes, exactly. So the best thing to do is to ask ahead of time to get some feel for it, without a doubt. And if you, if, or if you are trying to find a path of forgiveness, is it for someone else or you're trying to release yourself from being angry about this? It is about releasing because I, I think a lot of times there's an, an understanding of forgiveness that isn't quite accurate. It's the misunderstanding is that you you feel okay about it, that it's, it's all right. It doesn't matter. It does matter. Forgiveness in this definition isn't a, a way of reconciling. It's about releasing the emotional anger and angst that you have, releasing it by defining acceptance as I don't like this situation. It, no matter what, it wasn't fair for me. And as we said, venting to someone that you can trust who won't feel offended or insulted by that. And then letting go of the expectation because the expectation is really what's causing you to suffer and feel this frustration ruminate round and round and never stop. So we want to stop that merry-go-round. In a you want to do way. it for your benefit, not, not as much for the person you're mad at, whether it's yes. the parent or the sibling or someone else. You want yeah. to do it to free yourself up so you can – focus on other things, more positive things. Yes. One of the things that forgiveness instructor said is we're not humans having a soul experience. We're souls having a human experience. And human experience will be filled with different emotions and everybody has different expectations and different different impressions of what the right way to deal with money is. So, the best thing to do is to discuss things openly and upfront before there's a, a crisis that happens. But if there is an, an unfair settling of an estate, then the best thing anyone can do is release the frustration element of it so that now, they can feel more at peace. Now, as you mentioned earlier, formal legal challenge, which might be possible in some under some situations, may be very expensive and uncertain and an yeah. uphill battle. But is it, is it important to have some kind of conversation, um, perhaps, you know, with a, a lawyer, with your, an advocate, with a, a neutral family member about um, restructuring the, uh, well, the estate? I think especially when they're, were some kind of undue influences, say you, you've, you've got some evidence that a sibling was siphoning money out of a parent's account or perhaps... Or maybe they weren't aware of their needs, too, the, 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 right, the parent yes. at the time. A lot of times what, what the benefit can be of discussing the situation with an estate attorney is they can give you an idea of whether this would be a terribly, terribly expensive thing to try to resolve, maybe would never get resolved in a, in a peaceful way with the legal action. And that can help you rule in or rule out that kind of activity. And, and a lot of times it, it helps rule it out with a good, honest, unbiased attorney. They, they would let you know if this probably can't turn out all that great, even if you take action. It's also possible the sibling who has left money doesn't totally need it or, you know, might have some sympathy for your need or your condition, or maybe you're a lot different. You know, maybe you've matured and accomplished or taken a different direction since that will was written or perhaps later in life. 
So sure. there, there's, there, are, there may be a way to have a conversation, if not directly with them, yeah. through another relative, through an accountant, a, a lawyer, a minister, a social worker. Oh, yes. There's so many great helping professionals that can really help you resolve for yourself what your feelings and... Well, I also mean with the other person to try oh, to sure. see if some accommodation. I mean, it may be off the books. It may not be an official litigation, but it might be ha- able to, you might be able to have a conversation and to see, achieve some rough justice in your mind with a, an appropriate facilitator. That's true. There are mediators. Which will help to de-escalate the situation. The yeah. mediator could be someone like you in mental health or some lawyers are trained in a state mediation. Yes. And, 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 and to create more of a win-win situation for everyone. So true. And these days there's, there are even, there's a newer profession that's been around for about 10 years called financial therapists. So it's people who are trained in finance and financial planning and conflict resolution and therapeutic devices or methodologies. And this can be an ideal way to have that conversation and resolve it between a couple of people. And it can be a, it can be a pleasant experience. Sometimes people think it's bound to be ugly, but no, it, with the right kind of facilitation, it really can be a pleasant experience. Well, it probably also allows for the venting of expectations and sure. grievances, mm-hmm. which is, you know, one important aspect, you know, so the family can continue in a more peaceful and positive way. Yes, exactly. And, you know, so there, we're, t- we're kind of been presuming in this discussion that, that people are all somewhat even in how they've handled money, they just might have more of it from their wage and or less of it. But, you know, so often there might be a family member, an adult child that has has more serious issues, addictions, and they've lost piles of money over and over again from going through multiple treatments and those kinds of things. So it can get very hairy, very complicated. And again, having a professional practitioner help you sort out these things to get to a place where you you want it to be fair and have people feel peaceful and like this is settled adequately, good enough. And maybe some token, some cherished item, a small portion of what you would have been entitled to, leaving Mm -hmm. something to your children or spouse, would you would also find helpful and, and lead to more of a path of forgiveness and reconciliation. Yes, true. And just keeping in mind that the best definitions of forgiveness are about finding a way to be having an acceptance within your heart so that you don't feel the, the emotional turmoil that comes from not having that forgiveness process. Right. As you mentioned, the most important thing is to release your grievances so you can go on, especially if you cannot, you know, resolve the resolve it to your satisfaction. Well, during grief, because this is about after someone has died and you're dealing with perhaps uh, people feeling like the estate distribution isn't fair. Validation is one of the most important things that people can hear about their experience or how they view something. And validation can bring a lot of peaceful acceptance to several members of the family where it, like a lot of times what happens is it say you've got two siblings who just feel like this somehow is just out of whack. Well, when one sibling understands the feeling of hurt on the part of another, there, that can go a long ways in by just validating. I didn't, a lot of times you'll find someone is saying, I didn't realize I hadn't thought about it that way. And so those kind of good conversations, especially when they're facilitated by a professional, can just make a world of positive difference. And it's probably very little to lose. True, true, yes. I just want to remind our listeners that we're listening to Susan Zimmerman. She is a a chartered financial consultant and a licensed marriage and family therapist, and she's written many books about the topics we're discussing, which for this program is minimizing conflict over an estate. 
Um, Susan, just take a minute to tell us about some of your books that cover this area. Oh, yes. Thanks, Ken. I'd be happy to. The, the book that's just out this year and new is Rays of Hope, Lighting the Way in Life's Transitions and Losses. And it's a book about not only when we happen to have entered into some kind of grief process, it can be, it can happen from just changes, even the ones that have been celebrated and are positive, like a child graduating from college, for example. We have such change going on in our life that we can enter into a feeling of loss for, with the example of the college grad that then they no longer live at home and mom and dad miss their presence in the home and they, they feel, you know, a loss that they hadn't anticipated. So grief is something that I like to help people with what I call the four habits of hope. And, and it's written about in that book, but the, the habits of hope are about honoring your actual experience with it. Like, just giving yourself credit, validating for yourself that your emotions are real, being open to what the grief is teaching you, even if it's about, well, I, I need to forgive some of these situations, for example, since we've been talking about that. Persevere when you, even when you feel like giving up, and then encourage, which is a way of infusing courage and just a forward movement for yourself. And that's a way to get through the, the losses that you experience when you're grieving, whether it's the death of a loved one or a situation that has felt terribly unfair. And is it, you mentioned it's, it's good to try to air the grievances in the family. If not, it's good to speak to a minister or a friend or a trained professional it's very important to air the grievances and then try to let go of them over time. So true. Yes, yes. That The letting go is once you understand, well, I've had so many people just in hearing the definition where the definition of forgiveness is releasing an expectation that's causing you to suffer and they realize the first question is, well, what is the expectation that I might have been carrying around that I didn't even realize was there? And so it, one of the steps in that process is to express the feelings about it, but then release it by acknowledging what you would have preferred, even though you've identified that, you know, it's not going to change, and then just re-putting in place healthy boundaries and deciding that acceptance is where you're going to feel the best peacefulness. And as part of that, would you, is it good to be less bitter about, let's say you got your sibling who did get the, you know, whatever you did not get? Sure. Bitterness is one of the common emotions that can spring up when there's an estate inequity, or even if it's just a perceived inequity, sometimes adult children remember a loan that a younger sibling got, you know, 10 years earlier, and that wasn't accounted for in an estate. So they can feel that that was terribly unfair. And yet in the big scheme of things, it wasn't a big thing, The but the perception was that it was large. So yes, that forgiveness of an expectation is that it would have been accounted for. And what you're providing for yourself is that you're going to let that go because you want to have a healing energy during the rest of your life. You don't want to live in bitterness because it's a painful feeling to have. I would just like to remind our listeners that you're listening to Susan Zimmerman. She is a chartered financial consultant and a licensed marriage and family therapist. You can also hear another podcast with her at nccradio.org on avoiding conflict over your state. And that's more about the planning stages, how you can put have conversations and put in place a plan to avoid some of the problems that we are discussing in this show. And the podcast for that information is at nccradio.org, along with many other podcasts of programs from Law You Should Know. Um, Susan, what are some other ways that you can allow yourself to find comfort and calm after someone's passed on and perhaps you're not totally happy? Yes. Well, one of the, one of the things I recommend also, and I, the reason I have acronyms is from 
coursework where the acronyms help you remember what should I do right now with this? And so when you have a loss like this, a loss of the sense of fairness, one of the things that I have is a way to write in a journal and I call it the getting a grip on growth. So G-R-I-P and the, that's three prompts that you can respond to. And when you write them out, it helps contain the sense of loss or frustration or unfairness. So the G in grip is to answer the question in writing, what is gone? What have I lost in this feeling of unfairness? And you write out what's lost. So maybe you lost faith in your parents to be fair because no matter how you slice it, you perceive it to be unfair. Then write what remains. And usually what remains is significant love for your parents and the other family members who are inheritors that share that with you. And then finally, what is possible? What is possible often is where people find in the future, well, it's possible that we can resolve and still feel a great love for the family members that remain after this loss. And so those that journaling can be a, a really significant thing when you when you work it as the getting a grip on growth because we do grow when we've gone through grief and loss. And so that's and, one thing I recommend. And it's probably better than letting this uh, omission control you and relationships with the family for the rest of your life. Yeah, without a doubt. It's so important because, you know, as we've heard, you know, re really often times as children, life isn't fair. Well, we expected our parents to be fair, but you know, in the absence of significant discussions going on and having different impressions of what fair looks like in that estate, you know, the the decisions were different. And so it's it's just so valuable to recognize that the expectation itself is something to let go of in order to bring yourself a peaceful feeling about it and integrate it all. Like I said, with the, the grip exercise, it really is a way to find a, a true peacefulness about it and a, a love that is going to transcend the difficult feelings. And what if you're at the receiving end of the generosity of your parents and you, you, know, you want to reduce animosity and promote love, should you voluntarily um, relinquish some of the gifts to reduce your share to even out a little bit or at least in a token way? Well, you know, as a, as a, on the therapist side of me, I would say that is always a possibility because it's, it's perhaps extremely likely that the parents didn't realize this would bring discomfort on both sides of this equation. So, Typically, the inheritor may not go there. It's sort of like all of a sudden you think you would have been more fair, but now you have this money and, gee, your younger brother was kind of a jerk when he had to go through three different alcoholic treatments or something or nothing like that. So I, I have more of a faithfulness that people can bring that. If you have done a financial plan for yourself where you know you have more than adequate assets to sustain you during your retirement years, I think it's very doable and, and likely and a great idea to share it. So, and you can also do it in little spurts. You can, uh, you can say, I see you need a new car or, or your child needs to go to college or this Maybe your family needs a, you know, has a long deserved vacation or you lost your job. You can also um, somehow take your good fortune and spread it around and maybe that would help. Yeah, absolutely. And you can, you could say, I'd, I'd like to host something or I'd like to help you out with like, say they're having trouble making ends meet, but you say, you know, I'd like to help you out, like in your example, with a new car and, or a, a better car, <laughs> you know, it maybe right. isn't a brand new one, but one that is going to improve their life experience because they don't have to worry about an unreliable car anymore. And usually it's those... Probably, probably your long lost loved one would not want them to suffer. Precisely. Yeah. It's, it's about, 
you know, you, you have, you love them and you want to provide something that you think would be helpful and just do it. Tell us about some of the information on your website and some of the books that also deal with these issues of minimizing conflict over an estate and, and try to adjust for an unbalanced estate. Sure. Or for someone feeling that it it was not balanced. There's a book called that I wrote in a couple of years ago called Mindful Money Matters. And the subtitle is Eight Ways to Honor Yourself and Your Financial Plan. And there's a chapter in that book about conflict resolution. And it it is geared a little bit more for couples so that they can resolve how to live peacefully with each other and share money or deal with merging money or not merging money. But it, it helps provide many different ways to communicate about money and it gives eight different case study scenarios of how people resolved common problems or conflicts with money because there's pretty much an infinite number of ways that people can lack you know, peacefulness about it. And that's because no two people had the same set of experiences as they grew up. So part of it is understanding what I call prosperity clarity. What is your idea of creating a prosperous universe for yourself? And is that about specific dollars or is it about a certain experience that you'd like to have in your life? Or an image. So, yeah, images. I, I just want to mention that um, is should people in that situation also seek counseling with someone who has, you know, someone like yourself who has a financial background and a counseling background to see if they can come to some ac- accommodation or tolerance of uh, yes, different it, uh, spending styles? The, the good news is now there are more. It was rare when I did it back in the 90s. <laughs> But now, the, for the last 10 years or so, there's been an occupation called financial therapy. And so these professionals help couples or families communicate about money so that they can get on the same page and come up with solutions for things that might at first just seem like a great big raw sore. And that's what can can happen for people. I'm all for facilitated conversations because if if there are hard feelings going into it, you're going to want a third party to help you. And there are ways to resolve these issues. Yeah, there there are. It it's never a guarantee because it depends on the degree of emotional fury right. that exists. Perhaps. But again, with with and the background, but with the trained. Uh, therapist or financial advisor or both, it is possible to make progress. Otherwise, it's going to be a continuing saga, which is not good. The the phrase I like to use is what we're going to try to do is find something you can both live with or that you can all live with. Yes, common ground. And just like when two people get together maritally, they aren't going to handle their money the same exact way they did as a single person. And, And also what unites them may be greater than what divides them. And maybe you can just, you know, reach some accommodation that they can go on. The, one person go on their fishing trips and the other can buy new China or something like that. They don't have any con- total control over the other in every aspect of their lives. Yes, yes. And that's why we like to talk about money personalities and and validating each person to, you know, what are the most important motives they have. They might like simplicity in their money life, whereas another person is all about, I want my money to grow and I don't care if it gets And, and someone's happy to get going to McDonald's or having a slice of pizza and someone wants to go to a four-star restaurant. Well, that's a great example, actually, okay. Ken. On that know. note, I wish we had more, some more time, but I would like to thank our guest, Susan Zimmerman, a chartered financial consultant and a licensed marriage and family therapist. If you missed any part of this show or you'd like to tell someone about it, please listen to the podcast at nccradio.org. And please, and at that site, there are many other podcasts about the law and many other shows from WHBC. And please join us at this same time next week on 90.3 WHBC, the voice of Nassau Community College. Mm-hmm.